and welcome to the Sock Witchery Podcast. My name is Lindsay and I'm coming to you from a very thunderstormy Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, where I live with my husband Colin and our cat Gigi. You can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, and YouTube as Sock Witchery. If you are a new viewer, thank you for coming to check out the channel. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for being patient and coming back. So school is now done. For those of you who are new, I am an instrumental music teacher here in town. Um, the last time I recorded, school was not quite out yet, and now school is done. So, yay, lots of knitting time. Not a lot of podcasting time. I haven't had time to just sit down and do it because summer has been busy. Also, I'm currently reorganizing my office. So we're coming to you from the living room in front of the giant Stephen King and other book bookcase with my Ghost Adventures print that Emily of Fangirl Fibers got for me. So that always hangs out in the living room. It needs a different frame because it's like doing that thing where it like drops. It's not the right size. That's okay. Okay, so we're trying something a little different this, this episode. So this episode, I'm only going to talk to you about socks. It is summer sock camp. So I have lots of sock FOs. I have lots of sock whips. I have lots of yarn acquisitions. I have new bag acquisitions. But I also have like a bunch of sweaters I want to talk to you about. So here's what we're going to do. Today I'm going to record socks only, and then next week I'm going to record a sweaters only. So this will be episode, I think this is finally episode 10, so it'll be like 10 and then 10.5. Instead of doing a gigantic hour-long one that I don't want to sit and edit and put pictures in and stuff because I've lost talk about with the sweater episode and I've lost talk about the sock episode, so we'll split them up. This is what we're going to do. So, yeah, uh, we'll talk about, yeah, FOs whips, uh, acquisitions of sock yarn, and bags. I have a bag giveaway to do on this episode, so stay tuned for that. It'll be in the acquisition section. So hunker in. Sorry if you hear any thunder, but like I said, it is thunderstorming like there's no tomorrow. But I wanted to record, so we'll deal. Okay, let's start with sock FOs. So I have, I think I have six, six for camp and seven total. So all of these socks are the String of Lights pattern, which is my pattern that is available on Ravelry. If you are unable to access Ravelry, you can email me at sockwitchery and we can work out, sock, sorry, sockwitchery at gmail.com and we can work out um, a way to get those patterns to you. Because I know not everyone can use Ravelry, but I have not set up an Etsy or any other thing because I just haven't, so. Yeah, if you want socks and you can't, you patterns and you can't use Ravelry, just let me know. Okay, so these are all String of Lights, which will be a link below, along with all the dyers and color names. So, first up are my Bella Swan socks. This was the first pair I cast on for camp. Also, I should say that all of these will be using a US size 1 2.25 millimeter needle match loop. And I use Chiaogu red needles, which you will see when we do whips because they hang out of all my socks, so. My Bella Swan socks. I have now officially finished Edward, Twilight, and Bella Swan. Sorry, Edward, Cullen, Bella Swan, and Twilight. And yeah, I have those three down and one, two, three, four more to go before I'm hopefully gonna get them all done by Wisconsin Sheep and Wool, which is when I bought all these. I'm hoping our light is good. I'm sitting in a lot of artificial light and I've got a window, but hopefully it'll be good. So yeah, string of lights, Bella Swan, Oh, size medium. These are all the size medium, which is the 64 count. So that's Bella. That was pair one mm, for camp. I'm sorry. Those are Bumblebee Acres. Uh, Bella Swan colorway on their Coquette base, which is what all my Bumblebee Acres socks will be on. So that's that. I have my box here that I've been keeping them all in. And I have not folded them up nicely, so the lid keeps like falling off. I've also apparently moved all of my socks to the living room because the boxes are heavy when I wash them all and put them away. So I lazily left them in the living room, all the storage boxes for them. I keep my socks in photo storage boxes when there's like 12 pairs. And then I have two very large, uh, those big boxes with like the Velcro or magnet lid. You can get it like Michael's and Joanne and other craft stores. So yeah. That was pair one. Pair two is not wanting to go on the blockers, but again, this will be a string of lights. This I did a little different. So I'm, I'm, I have a lot of sock sets. This one was Elvish Singing by Holly Press Fibers. 
that I got from K of the Crazy Sock Lady in her shop, Crazy Sock Lady Co. That is a fuzzy. I just did contrast toes. Didn't do heel, didn't do cuff. Just did the toes. This is a 7525 base. It's a delightful 7525 base. And they striped really nicely. So this is Elvish Singing by Holly Press. Again, size 64 stitch. Sorry, size medium 64 stitch. US size 1. 2.25 millimeter. That's pair two. Fold those up in the box. Now, now I can't remember what order I finished some of these in, so I'm just gonna kind of put them on here. I think these were next. <sighs> yeah, I've been knitting a lot of socks, but not as many as my friend Karen. So my friend Karen got, I got her into sock knitting last summer, and she is kicking my butt when it comes to FOs this year. She's, I think she almost has 12. She's gone, oh, I think double digits. I think she's on like pair 10 or something. I am not. Um, we both have a goal of 12 pairs for the summer. She was hoping to do, you know, a pair once a week and so was I and that's not happening for me. That's okay. I'm a little behind, but I'll get caught up again. You'll see with the whips that I'll get caught up. <laughs> All right, next up, Summer of the Witch by Dragon Horde. This was not a sock, this is just her, not just, this is her myth base, which is her 7525 purple with really cool green speckles and my string of lights pattern. Yay. I haven't worn any of these, mostly because it's been hot, but I'm excited to have like a whole like 12 pairs of socks to wear when school starts. So that was pair three for those keeping count. Next one is another Bumblebee Acres pair. These have all also been posted except for one. One has not been posted, but all these have been posted to my Instagram and finally updated my Ravelry. I had realized the other day I had not updated Ravelry socks, sock posts since February. It was, it was, it took me a while. I think I was missing 10 pairs of socks. That's quite substantial for me. So this was the, once I get them on the blocker, this was the Bumblebee Acres Summer Sock Camp Color that was very popular and was um, purchased through the Crazy Sock Lady Co. shop. And this is campfires and fireflies i can never remember the name and then the contrast is called dusk so i did again string of lights this is the i did a pop of color at the cuff which Kay likes to do chris suckley does and then i have heels and toes i love how these knitted up this like striping is so cool oh i left a pair i left a sock set upstairs i might yell at colin to come bring it down for me or i might just run up to pause and run upstairs and get it but yeah campfires and fireflies a lot of people miss this color and i'm really sorry if you did i'm not trying to like rub it in i love these yay so that was number four pair four i'm right i have seven one does not count for camp this next one does not count for camp because they were started and before camp and i just i was trying to finish these um i think i talked about this on my last episode i took my kids to my kid my students to the uh, Kalahari for an orchestra festival. And I tried to get one of these done, but I ended up with not a ton of knitting time on that trip. Not like in a bad way, it was just because I was talking to people and the kids and you know, it was too dark on the bus on the way home and stuff, but I did not get them done in time for camp to start. Cause I believe we, the festival was the 27th and camp started on the 28th of May. So these did not get done. These are Belle by Dragon Horde. This is on her lore base, which is her 80, 8515, 8020, 8515. I have some of it in the acquisitions pile, so we can double check that when we go through that. This is my third of her princess colorways. I have since done, I've done Megara, I've done Rapunzel, and I've done Belle. And I have Ariel, Merida, and Jasmine. Oh, I forgot other yarn upstairs too. I'm gonna have to pause before we do acquisitions and go get some stuff. So this does not count for camp. This is the sixth pair I have finished. Nope, fifth pair I've finished this summer. Which got a big cat hair in it. Gigi is upstairs sleeping. So hopefully she doesn't come down because she don't think she realizes I'm doing this. The only, one of the downsides of recording in the office is this where her food is. So she's always in the room. She was like, what are you doing? Okay, so super obsessed with Stranger Things. Just a heads up, wearing my Hellfire Club shirt. I also bought another Stranger Things shirt. I have an Eddie Munson, like, concert tee shirt that I pre-ordered that's coming in August and I bought pretty much all the Stranger Things yarn 
not all of it because some there was some that came out yesterday that I have not purchased but yeah I bought a lot of Stranger Things yarn and knit a lot of Stranger Things yarn so I bought two of the sock sets that Bumblebee Acres did and I have knit two of the so, okay so here's the thing I have the original Stranger Things color that they did back either in season one or season two it's it's old I've had it for a very long time it's been caked up in my stash and I haven't knit it and I don't know why it's gorgeous it was the Stranger Things color they released on this last when they did the Stranger Things update. So I didn't buy it because I already had it, but they did send me the mini for the sock set, which I'll talk about in acquisitions. But the first ones I cast on were the Upside Down. So this is the Upside Down with Times Up as the contrast. And again, I did a pop of color, contrast heel and toe, my String of Lights pattern on their Coquette base. I love how these turned out. I say that all the time. It's true though. I like how it pulled too. Like this on this. This on this. Yeah. So that's the upside down on Coquette. Magic loop. Medium. String of lights. Like I said, everything. Everything. Even all the all the <laughs> in progress ones I'm gonna show you are the same thing. So that's pair six. And then pair seven, I literally finished this morning before I got in the shower to record. Not record, you know what I mean. Take a shower to record. Okay, so I have not taken photos of these yet, and I probably won't get to today because if it, the weather's gonna be like this all day, I won't have good enough light to take photos. I take my photos in my kitchen on the floor with the curtains of the <laughs> curtains of my kitchen window open on my backdrops that I use. That's how I do it, I'm very professional. And then I edit in Snapseed, and then I put them on Instagram. These I'm very, very excited about. So the other, so Bumblebee did Stranger Things with the Hawkins Curse Mini. They did the Upside Down with the Time's Up Mini, which is the one I just did. And then this was the third one, and this is Hellfire Club with a D&D &D Mini. Can you even? I love these. I did not do a pop of color on these. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten a little tired of the pop of color only because I hate weaving in ends. I don't hate weaving in ends. I just don't like weaving in those ones. If I do pop of color next time, I'm gonna do like five rounds instead of just two, because then it'll make it easier to weave it in. I'm just lazy. It has nothing to do with anything. But look at this pooling where I did my gussets and stuff. Oh my God, these are so good. I love them. I'm gonna save these for special, <laughs> but they match my shirt. Yay, okay. So yeah, um, Colin and I are getting really into Dungeons and Dragons lately of the last, well, I talked about this last episode that we um, started watching Critical Role. I've gotten very into D&D. &D. I've always been kind of peripherally interested in D&D, &D, but like when you see the staging of these photos, there's a lot of, there'll be a lot of D&D &D related stuff. So that's everything. That's all seven for the summer so far. So um, I'm halfway through my camp socks. I've got six camp socks done and I have, yeah, six more to go. Math. I'm on break, can you tell? Okay, so let's talk about all the whips I have. Ooh, this is not a whip yet. That's an acquisition. Okay, so let's talk about all my different whips. So some of these have, nope, one of these has a half finished one. It's a half finished pair. All the rest of them are just begun. So not just begun. They're substantially done, but they're not. I don't have a pair yet. So I'll put this on the blocker so you can see it. I still have my progress keeper dangling off the toe because I haven't gotten that far into the second sock. I believe I'm only on the cuff. So I bought this sock set last fall. This is always October, October always. I can't remember. I think it's always October by Dragon Horde Yarn. I did, did not do pop of color, but I did, it was a sock set. So it came with contrast heel. Well, it came with a contrast color. And this is my, um, Pitter Patter Polymer Snail, Witch Snail. She has a witch hat and a cauldron for a shell. She is my favorite, or one of my favorites. Yeah, so that's the first one uh, on her myth base, so 7525. And I am, <laughs> I'm not in the middle of a round, yay. I'm this far on the second one. So, yeah. Some of these will be a little anticlimactic because it's like, oh, I'm this far on it. But that'll hopefully be pair seven for cam i think these are the ones i'm going to focus on next this is in my raven bag by knitting nelly i got this in a bag d stash and i love it i put halloween and spooky socks in here so yeah 
that's whip one. I have more than what I'm going to show you, but some of them are not in a they're not as interesting, so I'm not like yet. They're not like far enough because I impulse cast on because I'm Team Chaos. I feel um I have I think I've worn my camp shirt, but this year's camp shirt I got it with the logo on the front and then on the back I got this um got this I got the Magic Loop cabin sign like I sized it because you can on Spreadshirt like size things. I did like that big and then I did Team Chaos <laughs> on the back too because. I am Team Chaos. I will cast on what I want, when I want, whether other stuff is done or not. If I have the needles and the bags and the yarn, I'm gonna do it. Fun fact, I think I'm pretty much out of chuggers right now. I think everything is taken up. Wee. Okay, uh, next up, living in my, this was my Road to Rhinebeck bag from Hannah Lou Designs from Bubble Bee Acres. This had my Road to Rhinebeck. It was part of a kit, so you got the bag and the sock set. I love this bag. I use it all the time. It houses my Stephen King club collection socks usually so i'm working on prom night i believe that's what this one's called yes i always try to call it prom queen and it's not stephen king 2022 february from bumblebee acres it's on their coquette sock like i said everything is on coquette sock and uh these are my gym socks right now so we started going back to the gym and i bike and knit so i'm working on these at the gym they're very fun. My favorite thing about the Bumblebee Acres Stephen King Club is they don't scream Stephen King. Like there are some that have screamed Stephen King. My Christine ones, which you've seen, they're the blue ones. Those don't, this doesn't, but I love this. And then I have a glow in the dark. I believe Lindsay called this, of simply serving this was like the death head daisy, but this skull glows in the dark. And the reason, reason I use this progress keeper is because the cover of the book and this like match so when I stage it you'll see that copy of Carrie that I have I have two because this is technically has Carrie in it as well but that's my paperback copy of Carrie yeah so I'm uh through the I believe I'm almost done with the gusset decreases like I said I've been doing these at the gym so they're a little slow going but I think I want to finish uh the ones I just showed and these I think are my next ones that I'm gonna finish up hopefully over the weekend but I do need to seam a sweater as well so we'll see yeah that's that's two. Um, ooh, we'll talk about this one. This is in a Fates Thread Baby Yoda Porg and BB-8 bag <laughs> um, with a gorgeous little orange lining. I love the orange in this. And this is holding my very close to being done and I should probably just sit down and finish it. Um, Dynasty Fibers self-striping sock and oh my gosh I never remember the name of this. This is G's Louise. This might be G's Louise. I can't remember. I'll look it up and I'll put it right here if it's wrong and it'll be correct in the in the bar. This is my uh, Pitter Patter Polymer rainbow friend. He is blowing out, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, these have bamboo in them and I, um, I actually worked on a pair last summer that actually frogged because I need to redo them in a different pattern, but um, even though these have bamboo in them, they're still really stretchy. So this is from Dynasty Fibers. They're actually based out of the Nitty Gritty Yarn Shop, which is based here in Fond du Lac, but they do ship. These are so soft. I can't, I cannot. And yeah, they're self-striping. They're so cool. The heel came out really neat too. I need to just sit down. I mean, I'll sit down with these this afternoon and just finish them. What's in here? Oh, random worsted weight scrap, apparently. So that's sock number three, whip wise, that's on the go. I have, let's do this one, living in, let's see, a couple of these are Fates Thread Bags, most of these are Fates Thread Bags, the next couple are, my Baby Yoda slash the Child slash Grogu bag with my Mandalore zipper pull. Come on. Oh, there you go. Yeah. From Fates Thread. I have, actually socks for Colin. So our uh, third wedding anniversary was earlier this week. I did not get them done for that, but these are the Obi-Wan self-striping with my Grogu charm from Simply Serving. Oh, these are so cool. I need to get these done too. Problem is, is because Colin's feet are longer than mine. The leg we do, I do the same length for both him and I, but his feet, I think it's like 12 rows more than mine and I just get tired and <laughs> I don't do that. They're also 72 stitches and not 64. I did do some yarn management. I did cut when I finished the heel turn so that my striping sequence was gonna add up. So I pulled out, actually I think it's in here. 
I pulled off not much that much to make the striping sequence line up. I mean, I might be able to do like a wedge and a blanket maybe with it. I don't know. Otherwise we'll see what happens. So this is from Mustache Yarn and it's one of her uh, must match. So it's two. You can see I've done a lot of work on this one. I'm, almost, I'm on the, am I done with the gussets? No, not done with the gusset, but yeah, there we go. I might do a contrast toe because I'm a little worried I'm going to run out of yarn. We'll see. I don't think I will, but I might. So yeah, that, I bought that on Star Wars Day. I have hooked my yarn in my zipper. Not in the actual zipper, in the pull part. That's easy to get out. There we go. Um, I did not cast them on. These technically come for camp. I cast these on for camp. So all of these are camp socks. I should have mentioned that. I cast all these on for camp. Yeah. I love this bag. <laughs> I put non-Star Wars yard in there too sometimes. Okay. In my Twilight Fates thread bag, my vampire teeth pull, which I believe you've seen because I've done all my Twilight socks in here. Uh, I have started my new moon socks. This is again Bumblebee Acres on their Coquette base, and this is, like I said, the new moon color. They took a lot of their color inspiration from the films, not the books, which is why there is no Midnight Sun color because they just did the movies. This is actually my favorite Twilight movie. It's my favorite one, my second favorite Twilight soundtrack. Might be my favorite. I don't know. That and Eclipse are really close. And that's it knit up so far. This is a Charmed and Dangerous Pet Rock. He is holographic. He's backwards, but there you go. I love him. Yeah, not very far. I started these as soon as I finished Twilight well, Camp, and then I just haven't really thought about the because the Stranger Things yarn came. That's what the Stranger Things yarn came, and then the camp, the camp yarn came, and then the Stranger Things yarn came, and then these got kind of forgotten about. But I'm going to get these done, hopefully, for Wisconsin Sheep and Wool, which is the week after Labor Day. So I got to hustle on that. I don't think I'm going to get them done. I was worried this episode was going to be too short and sorry, 20 minutes long. Okay, so living in my Ollie and Bella bag that Cherie sent me this Christmas and they swap and I still need to send hers out. It's Christmas in July. As long as I get it out by the end of the month, we'll be good. <laughs> she and I are doing a kind of a mini knit along together using Green Lambkin yarn. She is from the UK. And this is her on her sparkle sock. Uh, I believe it is Silver Stellina. Yeah, Silver Stellina. This is called Gingerbread Snowflake. I believe she has Christmas yarn in the shop right now. So you could go get some if you like it. There you go. It's very pretty. I'm actually doing vanilla socks on this. I never do vanilla socks. So I guess not every pair is string of lights. This is vanilla. So I'm doing... Uh, the Crazy Sock Ladies Magic Loop, uh, Magic Loop, Vanilla Socks on Magic Loop pattern. And then I have uh, Peppermint Bark, Peppermint Mocha Star from Lindsay of Simply Serving as my Christmas charm. Yeah, I need to, again, sit down and just do these because they're vanilla, so I should get them done in like a day or two. But distracted, easily distracted by shiny objects. Yeah. So hopefully a lot of these will be done by the next time I record a sock episode. I think if I divide it up like I'm going to, it might make it more manageable and I might get less overwhelmed in podcasts more, but we'll see. School will start. I think summer school, I think I only have technically like three weeks of summer left because I start summer school on August 1st, so woe is me. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kind of at that point in the summer where it's like, I might need to go back to work already, but living in my s'mores bag from Jenny of Mountain State Stitches that I purchased through the Crazy Sock Lady Co. for camp with all my camp pins. I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I have every pin from every year. So that's uh, 2020, 2021, 2022, and Magic Loop Cabin. I love Jenny's bags. I love all the bags I have. That's why I have them. Okay, so in a Holly Press Fibers sock kit, on her sheepish sock, that is the name of the base. It is 7525 with, it's a sock set. It's roasting marshmallows. Which I believe, I can't remember if it was a camp specific colorway or if it's just a colorway she had that's camp ing related. And yeah, I have a s'mores charm from um, Tiddly Bakes on here. Yay. Yeah, it's a good one. Tiddly Bakes does the best, like baked good things. So yeah, there you go. Just. Doing another string of lights, 7525. This is the mini. And then this is the cake. Mm -hmm. There you go. So yeah, several of these will be done by the next time I record a sock episode. So you will see them both here and on Instagram. Okay, 
that's whips. <sighs> Let's talk acquisitions. If you're not here for that part, thanks for coming and hanging out. If you are, guess what? It's not as bad as you might think it would be, considering how much space there's been between me um, podcasting and now, June and now. Actually, hold on one second. I have to run upstairs and get a couple of things that I forgot to grab. Hold on. And we're back. Okay, acquisitions. We're going to start with my Bumblebee Acres acquisitions first. So, the two Stranger Things sock sets, which are now both done, came at the same time as Catching Fireflies and Midnight. And at Midnight, not at Midnight. This is at Midnight, the mini, and then this is the Catching Fireflies. There we go. You can see it better. It, it's dark, like me looking at it, but on the camera it's picking up pretty good. So... I have to get to this before camp is done. It's not camp specific yarn, but yeah. What was this? Catching fireflies at midnight. That's one. Um, oh, like I said, I, this is what I mean. I have the original Stranger Things color in a horrible cake. This is very old. I think this is like five years old, at least, on their coquette base. And they sent me the Hawkins Curse Mini, so I technically now have the sock set as well. I'll get to that eventually. Yeah, I have another Stranger Things yarn that I need to knit first, you'll see. And then we sadly finished the Tour de Tolkien in the month of June. So Tour de Tolkien started in July of 2017 and ended in June of 2022. I have, I don't know how many <laughs> skates from this collection. I think I have all of Return of the King. I think... I have most of Two Towers. I'm missing some of Fellowship because there was a big like six to eight month gap where I could not order the club. So yeah, I have a lot of Tour de Tolkien. You're gonna see me start working through some of those finally. I mean, I have Tour de Tolkien and then I also have Tolkien, like just inspired ones. Yeah. Rings of Power Gang, September 2nd, second day of school. It's that, that starts. Okay, very excited. Hey, I have not bought new editions of Lord of the Rings in a while. <laughs> Uh, if you've seen my staging photos of Lord of the Rings based yarns or Tolkien based yarns, I have one, two, three, four. I have four physical copies of the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy. I have three of The Hobbit. I have two sets of audiobooks of both and then ebooks of all of them too. Yeah, I have a problem. And I have uh, half of the history of Middle Earth. All that to say, this was the last color. <laughs> for Tour de Tolkien and it was called Grey Havens because of course it was. So yeah, June 2022, the Grey Havens. I have a very soft spot for this club because um, my very first sock design, my bag end socks, were out of the very first colorway of this club. So I might have started crying <laughs> when I opened this. I have a lot of feelings about Lord of the Rings. It's fine. So yeah, there's the, the art. And yeah, it's sad. It's gorgeous, but it was sad. So, however, July kicks off there and back again, which is the Hobbit themed one. So, uh, hopefully by the next time I record, I will have that first installment of that club. Yay. Uh, sorry. I should have said if you hadn't received these clubs, like, and you didn't want to be spoiled. My bad. I got these like a week ago. So if you order them, you should have them by now. And then this month for, oh, there's, oh no, I snagged this on something. Oh, this got a fuzzy. It's fine. It'll be okay. I have um, the Green Mile. Oh no. I'm so sorry. Green Mile was May. I didn't bring down the May Tour to Tolkien. Did I talk about May Tour to Tolkien? I don't know. I might have. I think it was called Reseeding the Shire. Anyway, this was May. Green Mile. I don't know if I talked about this in the last episode. I want to say I did, but yeah, sorry. I just realized that that's not, that's not this month. This is this month. This baby, can you dig your man? Just Larry Underwood from the stand. June 2022. Sen loves it, Larry Underwood. I, fun fact about me. So that's the stand. That's the stand. I have it for my e-readers because I have two now. Don't ask. And I've gotten about halfway through, which is about 700 pages, and I cannot finish it. To be fair, the last time I got all the, or like a substantial way amount through it was the beginning of the pandemic. So that was not the time to be reading the stand. So I think I'm going to give it the old college try again one of these days. Yeah, 
I have a leather bound version, the Barnes & Noble one. I don't know why I'm leaning down like it to help you see better. There we go. That one, and then just the beat up paperback version. This is actually the one I've read the most. This one's just pretty. I have lots of pretty ones. Um, our, like I said, our wedding anniversary was the other day, and uh, Colin got me a really cool, um, he got me two books. He got me this really cool version of Misery from the Folio Society. That comes in this beautiful slipcase. And he also got me, which I did not know was a book, but I love very much. He got me, oh, Howl's Moving Castle. The Folio Society books are, so, you can see the shiny. Oh, oh, yeah. So that, that was some of my anniversary gifts. He's gotten me books for lots and lots and lots of anniversaries and gift giving holidays. I'm a little out of practice. I keep looking at myself. I'll stop doing that now. Okay, that was my Bumblebee acquisitions. I snagged a skein of pearls and postulates be part of the solution in her summer chemistry update. This is on her Harris two ply base, which is a 7525 two ply pearls and postulates. I found Pearls and Postulates through Nicole of the Professor Pearl podcast, who I've been thoroughly enjoying binging this summer. Her and then um, Sierra of Tink and Bobble gone through and watched all their vlogmas <laughs> and all their back episodes. So check them out if you haven't. They're pretty great. Yeah, so be part of the solution. Oh, that's soft. I need to cast that on. I got the Gaddy Yarn Co. June 2022 Princess Mystery Club, which was Jasmine. The princess is not the mystery, but the color is. She killed it. Like, this is Jasmine, like straight up. So, so far we've done Aurora, Cinderella, Jasmine, and then July is Ariel. And I believe August is Belle. I think she just announced that. So, signups are closed for July, but Ju uh, August are open. Or will be open on the 1st of August, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Dragon Horde. So I, she released some Greek mythology inspired colors. So I bought Clotho on Lore Fingering. Lore is, yes, 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon. Yes, and the colorway is Clotho. Clotho is the fate who is in charge of spinning the thread of life. So she is the patr patron deity of um, fiber artists. So that's why I got her. So that's Clotho. And then I also got Medusa because she's my favorite Gorgon. Plus, how do you say no to this? Oh, yeah. Oh, part of my love for Medusa comes from um, the video game Hades, which I haven't played, but I've watched Colin play for a very long time because we love that game a lot. And Dusa, or Medusa in that game is named Dusa, and she's the maid, and she's just a floating head, and she's adorable, and I love her. So that's why Dusa, Medusa. Okay, so we're going to start getting into bags now. So I'm actually going to, we're going to talk about a couple of bags and then we're going to talk about the bag giveaway. Then I'm actually going to go into some um, future sock cast on thoughts, which is new for me. Okay, so um, Troy Snow Dragon Horde did a running up that hill colorway. And as we've discussed, I am obsessed with Stranger Things. Have been for a very long time, but this season hit me just in a real good obsessive way. So I got running up that hill <laughs> on her lore base. I like her myth base a lot too, but lore is my favorite. Are you gonna focus on that or are you gonna look at my face? There we go, running up that hill. And then Tristan has started doing polymer clay charms. So I got the Max mixtape. Kinda, sorta, there you go. Yeah, on a gold lever bag. So that's actually living in my Let's Roll bag from Fate's Thread with the D20. That's how I roll. Zipper pull. Like I said, D&D &D is taking over in this household. And yeah, so that's actually my next cast on, like, as soon as I'm done. I wanted to talk about the yarn before I um, wound it up and started knitting on it. Okay, bags. Bags, bags, bags. So the lovely Georgian released some spooky bags. There's kind of a funny story about this. So I ordered one, she shipped me accidentally a different one and then I kept it cause I wanted it anyway. So win-win. So the first one I ordered was this witchy bookcase one. This is Georgian's art of Stitching Plaza. 
I have several of her bags. That's one side. That's the other. That's the witchy bookcase bag. Also, a heads up if you don't like spiders, do not look at this bag. This next one. And then, yeah, spooky spider bag. Big spiders and their sparkly gold. Skulls wearing bowler hats, bats, and yeah, this is the one she sent me by accident. I just said, can you invoice me for it? Because I want it anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. So those are my two most recent Stitching Plaza bags. Did I talk about my other ones? I think I did. My Haunted Mansion one. The Main Street Electric Parade one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Sorry, I thought I saw the cat creeping from the thing. Uh, I got a new Fates Thread bag. One of the Tolkien ones I did not have. It's just a drawstring small bag. The inside though is so cool. It's a map of Middle Earth. I can't show it to you because it's hard to show, but it's very cool. I kind of want a bag with this on it. <laughs> so that's new. And then the lovely ladies at Barley and Pearls, who I believe are, I know Chris, Chris and Krista, who are in Conway, Arkansas. There's their card. They're on Etsy and Instagram at Barley Pearls. Oop. So Chris contacted me on Ravelry and asked if she could send me some bags that they also want to give away to you. So the fr they asked me to pick out one I liked and then they said uh, that they were going to just find inspiration for one for me. So I got the Love Note bag. It's got typewriters. And look at how cute this like zipper tab is. It's a little hard. And that, so it's got a bright pink zipper and a handle. And then the inside of these bags are insane. This is a sock bag that's got pockets. So it's got um, typeset pockets. There's two, there's one on here, there's one on here. And they have a little jump ring with their logo on it so you can hang things on it. So scissors, if you get the mini snips from Crazy Sock Lady Co and stitch markers and progress keepers. So that's the one I picked out. And then uh, Chris messaged me and said, she had asked if I wanted a Halloween bag. I said, of course, because who doesn't want a Halloween bag? And then she said that she had different inspiration instead. So I have a bag now that's called Lindsay's Christmas Concert, which is available on their Etsy shop. <laughs> so it's got this really cool music on it. It's like a sleigh bell, sleigh ride kind of thing. It's got a plaid box bottom, black handle, little plaid zipper tab and then so this is a little bit this is like a more medium this is probably a three skein bag and then the inside the pockets are like holly fabric and then this black checkerboard and i love it so they're giving away um one of each of these bags to you guys so i'm gonna have you in the comments down below um tell me which one is your favorite and tell me what feature is your favorite. And then when I go to record the sweater episode, so I'll leave it open until I record the sweater episode and post that, so about a week. So look for that next Friday, I'll close it next Friday, provided I get this up on Friday. Yeah, you get to pick and they, I just will I'll contact the winners and then I will send you your addresses to them and they will send it to you. Yay. So very exciting. All right. Like I said, I thought this was going to be a very long episode. It's a long episode. And I'm glad I'm not talking about my sweaters. We'd be here all day. All right. Dream knitting. So when they released the Hocus Pocus 2 trailer, I got very excited and like went and pulled every fall yarn I had in stash and laid it out in a pile on my floor because <laughs> I have a lot caked up and I have stuff in skeins that I haven't knit. So here are three, two sock sets and one single skein that I'm going to knit up in the next several weeks for Halloween after I finish the Always October ones. This is from last year's uh, <laughs> Bumpy Acres colorway, Halloween colorways. This is a zombie bite. Woo! I'm gonna knit that. That's on their coquette base. I have a Legacy Fiber Arts The Ants sock set. So this is Practical Magic, which they did as their theme last year. I'm assuming their their Halloween cover colors are coming soon because it's mid-July. I think Halloween colors usually come in August, which is why I've tried not to buy a lot of yarn this month, which I've done. Like for the month of July, I purchased clubs and that's kind of it. And then I have a Gaddy Yarn Co. Hocus Pocus sock set on her tab. Yeah, tabby sock. So 75.25. Yeah, so that's it. I will talk about life stuff and whatnot on the sweater episode. Basically, we've been very busy. We've been at the lake a lot. I've been 
working on a string pedagogy class that's online and yeah watching i've been very into gold rush on i guess we're talking about life stuff on this i've been very into gold rush on discovery plus so i've been watching that i just started season eight when i'm done i think i'm gonna watch deadliest catch um i've been reading a lot like i said i got two e-readers now i bought a my nook is very old and i've been kind of wanting to jump ship and go to kindle for a while because i have kindle unlimited and it's i don't want to read my ipad in bed kind of thing so bought a kindle on prime day been loving that lots of mysteries lots of thrillers we'll talk about let's talk about books on the sweater person so i'm gonna leave you here for this part of the episode and i will see you next week when we talk about sweaters bye